Chris Cav is here for Naval News at the U.S. Navy League Sea Air Space Exposition outside of Washington, D.C. We're at the Fincantieri stand where one of the models that's garnering a lot of attention at the show is, of course, the, that of the U.S. Navy's new Constellation class frigate, FFG-62. This is a modification of the Frem design from Fincantieri, and this is a modification of the last time a model was displayed as the design process continues between the Navy and Fincantieri and uh, with design agents Gibson Cox. So the most noticeable difference so, uh, at the moment on this particular model is that the shape of the bow has changed. So before there was a bulbous bow, there was a, a, a hull-mounted sonar. The U.S. Navy is, does not have a requirement for a hull-mounted sonar. That actually is, the sonar will come as a, in the place of a variable depth sonar as a part of a towed array. So the ship doesn't need a hull-mounted sonar, so the bow has been modified for better sea keeping. It's, a, it's more of a spoon shape, and it is, we now incorporate bulwarks around the deck edge for better sea keeping. The Navy wants this ship to be able to operate uh, in, uh, up, up to uh, sea state eight, which, is, which uh, meant better sea keeping. So also amidships, we have just a little bit more in the, in the way of naval strike missiles. The last uh, time this was displayed, there were two um, qu um, quad packs for a naval strike missile now, the Navy's doubled that requirement, so there, there are four. Other than that, most of the topside arrangements uh, appear to be about, uh, about the same. There remains a, uh, an enclosure for a rib. The rib is uh, sized for seven, it's, it's, uh, meets a Navy requirement for a seven meter rib, but should the Navy want to use 11 meter ribs on it, it'll be sized for that. But we still have uh, the, the, the flight deck aft, the same sensors, and the same pro similar propulsion. And that's a look at the frigate. We're now at the Lockheed Martin booth, where as always there are quite a number of uh, interesting models on display. Up here we have their helicopter offerings from Sikorsky, a division of Lockheed Martin. At the top, the Sikorsky's, uh, the MH-60 Sierra, or S model, the Romeo MH-60R, and of course the, the nice one with the whirly going around is the CH-53K, now in uh, low rate initial production for the U.S. Marine Corps heavy lift helicopter. In front of me right here is a very nice model of USS Preble, a ship that's been in service for quite a while, but what's interesting about this model is this fitting right here forward in the location usually occupied by a close-in weapon system, a SeaWiz, is a Helios laser system, an optical dazzler system. This has already been installed on several ships of the U.S. Navy. It's already at sea. It's intended to uh, defeat um, small drone, small UAVs, small helicopters, small craft. Um, it's it's uh, but it's now already in service in destroyers in the U.S. Pacific Fleet. Over here are several frigate designs that they offer. One, of course, is the Canadian surface combatant. This is the variant of the Type 26 British frigate that where Lockheed Martin is the um, has the combat systems for the Canadian version of this frigate. There are also versions of the frigate being built in Britain and in Australia. Over here is the Lockheed Martin multi-mission surface combatant. This is based on the Freedom Class LCS-1 for the U.S. Navy, but this is the multi-mission surface combatant which is now under construction at Marinette Marine for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, who has, who has already purchased four of these ships. The first two already are under construction, much more heavily armed version of the, of the American uh, LCS with vertical launch systems and surface-to-surface -surface missiles. Down here is the Hellenic Future Frigate offering from Lockheed for the Greek frigate program. Uh, Lockheed Martin is one of several naval firms vying for that contract. We're now at the General Dynamics booth where for electric boat 
they're displaying a juxtaposition of two Virginia-class submarines. The first model here is a Block 4 sub, in this case the USS Vermont, which features two Virginia payload modules mounted in the bow. These are large diameter tubes that can carry a variety of missiles, uh, web, diff different kinds of weapons, and also uh, different kinds of vehicles. The subsequent Block 5 class is incorporating the Virginia payload module, which also includes the to two tubes forward, but adds a whole, whole hull section amidships with four more tubes. Moving amidships, there's a hump for four more Virginia payload module tubes. So this entire hull section is a new install and add into the existing hull. This is why this submarine, the, pay, the Block 5 with the Virginia payload module, is larger than the regular Block 4. A different look at the Virginia-class Block 5 submarine is on display at BAE Systems, which makes the Virginia payload module tubes. They have a cutaway of the model which shows the configuration inside the hull. Two of the four tubes, are the, the hatches, are open in this particular display. The model is being displayed with, alongside an Archer Fish, mine countermeasures system. This is a uh, system that can both locate, well, detect, track, locate, and destroy if necessary an enemy mine. It is in service within the U.S. Navy on board MH-60 Sierra S helicopters and is under the Common Neutralizer program for the U.S. Navy. We're here at Volante, which is a small technology company out of Concord, California. They specialize in cargo delivery from unmanned aerial vehicles. The company has developed two vehicles that they have on display here, the first of which is of what they call a Voli 10. This is a smaller vehicle that is, uh, it can carry about uh, 10 pounds of cargo over 30 miles. It's really intended for commercial use, medical supplies, small parts that people need fast, that sort of thing. But over here is something actually much bigger. This is the Voli 20. This is being developed for military or government use. This is something that uh, can carry about 20 pounds of cargo uh, plus a 10-pound payload sensor payload. It can travel about 350 miles with a, at a speed of about 75 miles an hour. The company just did a demonstration down in Key West, Florida, actually in July, with two government vessels, the U.S. Coast Guard Cutter William Trump and the Military Sealift Command's Fast Expeditionary Transport Burlington, where they used both vehicles, both of these aerial vehicles, to transfer cargo. It was the first time that there had been a demonstration of using UAVs to deliver cargo autonomously between two moving U.S. government vessels. The uh, Voli 20 here is something that is being targeted at any government agency that has such a need. And that's a quick look at just some of the exhibits on the floor here at the U.S. Navy League Sea Air Space Exposition in National Harbor, just outside Washington, D.C. For Naval News, I'm Chris Cavus.